Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know that I have not uploaded in quite a bit of time. I did have a pre-recorded video, like it's literally ready to upload, but I don't know if I'm gonna upload it. I'm thinking of refilming it, but I definitely wanna upload this video for you guys reviewing Solstice scents for the first time. I just ordered from them. I want to get more into indie perfumes. I just placed an order on Coco Pink, a really big order, but the turnaround time is insanely long, like 14 to 21 days, but people say they've waited like a month, two months for it. So that's kind of what I'm expecting. I knew that when I purchased it. So that video will come eventually. I heard it's an amazing house. And I've also heard a lot about Solstice, which is what this video is about. So it came with these really pretty pictures. And they have, ooh, oh my gosh, it says my name on it. Thanks, Ashley. I love that. I love shopping from small businesses. It's just, I was kind of taking my time with getting into indie perfumes because I did start off with Kies, Kies, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. And I just wasn't in love with that line. I only tried a few things. Um, I did really like this one fragrance, Froyino Lavande or something like that, but I did not really like the marshmallow one that everyone loves. So that kind of like took me out of my interest in indie houses, which is terrible, but it was just temporary until I did more research and here we are. So I'm hoping that I really like these. Let's get into it. Okay, the tape was really hard to remove, but it comes in this little booklet, you guys. Okay, and then we're, ooh. okay, I feel like something's gonna fall. Okay, yeah, something fell. It's this, and it has perfume sampling tips. So it's telling, <laughs> the first thing is do not smell all of them at one time. Unfortunately, that's what we're gonna do today. And I do wanna preface this by saying like, these are my first impressions. So please take everything I say with a grain of salt. You might wanna subscribe and see if I mention these in future videos, whatever the case. So. I might end up doing like first impressions and then like a follow-up video to my first impressions. It just depends, you know, if I end up doing it. But they have a lot of tips here, but let's just open this up. How cute. So they have this like black and white theme going on and I think Coco Pink has a similar aesthetic. They're definitely different, but you know what I mean? Like they both have the black and white illustrations and they look kind of like I don't even know how to describe this aesthetic, but maybe you guys can tell me. Um, so here they all are. I do like this a lot, how they're just kind of stuck on there rather than just rolling around. And so I think with five samples, I was able to pick one for free, or I don't know what the situation was, but I was able to pick one for free. And that one was kitchen, but we're gonna do that one later. Okay, let's start off with, oh my gosh, I don't know where to start. Okay. I always tend to film these videos with like the one that I was least excited for to the one that I was most excited for. So that's kind of what we're going to do, even though I'm excited for all of them, to be honest. So we're starting off with Sugar Veil, but on Parfumo Net, it has notes of caramelized pecans, butterscotch, butter, rum, brown sugar, maple syrup, praline, and chocolate. So let's see if I like this. Ooh. Oh, wow. So immediately I got a lot of butterscotch, which I like. Um, I do get the chocolate for sure. It's not like a super dark bitter chocolate. I need to specify that because I tried a chocolate recently that was like so bitter, like very, very dark chocolate. This is more like milk. Yeah, I do get the nuttiness. So yeah, I can smell the pecans. I can smell the butterscotch. I can smell the chocolate. This is giving me very much candle and um, I think that's the problem with me is like I buy these certain gourmands that are just usually home fragrance or something and then I'm expecting them to be wearable. Um, but I'm not just saying it smells like a candle because of the nature of the fragrance. I'm also saying because it does have a slight waxiness to it. But like very slight. It's not as bad as some Demeter gourmands. Like you know that brand Demeter that I've done a few videos on. They can tend to be very waxy. This smells very realistic, um, but I think it's just the nature of the fragrance. It just smells like one of those autumn candles and there's kind of no way around it. Like if you smell it really, really up close and really, really analyze it, you can start getting that syntheticity, but um, I would say it's pretty good for what it is. This is lavender raspberry truffle. And let me read the notes from Parfumonet. 
It has white chocolate, a bunch of lavenders, tonka bean, cocoa absolute, vanilla, and raspberry. So I almost didn't order this one because I think I was debating between this one and kitchen. And then I realized I could just get kitchen as my free sample. So let's try this one. I know that I like lavender gourmands because I really liked the Keese Froyino Lavande. Like I said, it's like a lavender butter cookie. Um, so let's see how I feel about this one. These are very fragrant and powerful, I will say, sometimes. I'll get um, these same size samples from like niche brands and I don't smell them until I like put my nose to it. But these, it's like I open it up and it's like immediately very aromatic. Okay. Okay. This is interesting because it's very obviously lavender heavy. It isn't until you really put your nose to it or start like thinking about it that you really get that like soft white chocolate. I will say like just to compare this to Matcha Meditation by Maison Margiela, I'll say that the white chocolate in Matcha Meditation is a lot more apparent to me. It's like very much sweetened by the white chocolate. <laughs> this is kind of like not as much white chocolate. And the raspberry is kind of there, but that's like way in the background. Like I think they could have amped up the raspberry and the white chocolate to make it like a much more balanced fragrance. Um, instead, this reads more as like lavender with some like base notes type of thing. You know what I mean? But actually as it dries down, I'm like contradicting myself because obviously this is the first time I've smelled it. But this is truly like a very top heavy lavender. But then as it dries down, you do get a little bit more of those um, gourmand notes. This is definitely interesting. I'm not getting any waxiness or like synthetic nature to this. It just smells like it's supposed to, very realistic. So yeah, this is an interesting one. I, I still think I prefer that Keese perfume if we're talking about like Lavender Gourmands um, by Indie Houses, but this is definitely a cute one and I want to kind of experiment with this. I love lavender for bedtime and relaxing, so I might wear this for bed one of these days. Okay, let's do Rose Mallow Cream next. I think I saw a few people talk about this on TikTok. Here are the notes. Moroccan rose, Bulgarian rose, marshmallow fluff, strawberry nectar, white chocolate, vanilla, white musk. So the strawberry and the rose are already making me think of you're the one. Um, but with the marshmallow and the white chocolate, I hope it's a little bit more gourmand. Let's see. Okay, again with the aroma, I immediately got that like doll head scent. Do you know what I mean? very much kind of like mucola but not exactly the same they're nowhere near like i'm just mentioning that because they both have like the doll head scent to them wow these are very interesting fragrances i want to just i'm not even halfway done but i just want to applaud solstice scents because i feel like they're very well curated so definitely you get the doll heads scent Okay, so I want to keep mentioning the comparison to Mucolat because Mucolat is like a strawberry, synthetic, like plastic doll type of scent. This is kind of what I wanted Mucolat to be because to me it's just a little bit better. I know that's crazy to compare this to Montal, but like they really remind me of each other. Except this is more jammy. Um, like it's like strawberry jam, like not super sweet like you would think with the marshmallow fluff and like the white chocolate that this would be like i don't know like strawberry pound cake or something from bath and body Works, but it's not it's more like jammy still sweet because you know jam is like full of sugar but it's just not quite what i expected it's really hard because it's like jammy but creamy at the same time like I get where they were coming from with the Rose Mallow Cream name, but I also feel like this could have been called like, I don't know, like, I don't know, something more true to the way that it smells in the sense that, like I said, it's kind of a, what's it called? There's a dichotomy between the jamminess and the creaminess. It's actually very, very sweet. Okay, this could definitely be overwhelming. You don't need a lot of this if you're gonna wear it. If you like those strawberry doll heads type of scents, you have to try this. It's, if you like sweet powdery scents that kind of
kind of smell like doll heads, you should check it out. It's not like Mucolat in the sense that it doesn't have any almond, but everything else I feel like is kind of comparable, honestly. Okay, next is Foxcroft Fairgrounds. And this one has a very interesting scent profile. It has cotton candy, cream soda, vanilla taffy, funnel cakes, powdered sugar, crisp fall air, wood smoke, and incense. So I'm very curious how the wood and the incense plays alongside these gourmand notes. Let's see. Guys, this is too much. Like, it's crazy that they listed all those other gourmand notes because this is very much incense and they put incense kind of at the end of the list. I'm sure it's not in the order of most to least potent in the fragrance or anything, but like, I don't know. I kind of saw it as an afterthought, especially since it's just incense and woods and then like all these gourmand notes it seemed like it would be a lot more heavy on the gourmand notes Ooh, i don't like this and i'm worried because i just ordered ragba by latafa i think that's yeah ragba by latafa and it has incense and i'm scared that it's gonna be way too incensey okay guys i'm sorry it's getting dark i'm gonna try and finish this up but this is kitchen and here are the notes pumpkin sugar cookies peach preserve spice breads danishes caramel vanilla and sweet wood smoke wood smoke this is so realistic and yummy it smells like pumpkin puree is on my skin but it's also very sweet probably because of the sugar cookies i do get like a slight woodiness but it's not overpowering like the incense that's in foxcroft fairgrounds i really like this and i was scared that it would smell too much like a candle kind of like um, the first one we smelled, I forgot what it was called already. Oh, it was Sugar Veil. There is like no waxiness, no artificial note in here. It just smells realistic like pumpkins. And I know this would be kind of a weird thing to put on your skin because you're going to be smelling like pumpkins. But I feel like this is easier to pull off than like pumpkin pecan waffles by Bath & Body Works would be. And kind of it's... It did dry down to be a little bit softer, so it's not going to be obnoxious on your skin just smelling like you slathered pumpkin on yourself. And like I said, it has like that sugar cookie note that I feel like this could be wearable. So I really enjoy this one. I don't know if I would ever buy a full bottle because like I said, it's just one of those things that I personally would only wear during like October. You know what I mean? Like that's just kind of how I am. But I know some people don't care about seasonal stuff, so I really recommend this one. Okay, and lastly, this is the reason I ordered from... Um, solstice in the first place because I was really interested about this one. It's called Blossom Jam Tea Cakes and I've also heard about this on TikTok and other platforms. Here are the notes. It is Southern Tea Cakes, Petite Fours. I don't know what that is. I think they're like little hors d'oeuvres or little cookies that you eat at a tea party maybe. Floral infused jams and preserves with a delicate aroma of tea. So let's see. Okay, immediately getting that baby doll head again that because i think i don't know why that's just how jam comes across in their perfumes i guess or like whoa okay i don't love this i just don't there is like a harsh sharp lemon in here i thought it was honey but it's not it's like lemon Yeah, just very tart, very citric. That's like all I'm getting right now. Sure, I got like a jammy aroma in the beginning, but it just got kind of weird very quick. Can't say I'm a fan. I don't know why this is their most talked about one because I think Kitchen is definitely their best one of this whole video. Ooh, I, I really hate this one. I really don't like this one, if I'm honest. So if my opinions change, I'll put it in the description box because the lighting is getting terrible, but... I will catch you guys in my next video. Uh, let me know if you want to see more videos like this testing out indie houses. Like I said, the Coco Pink video is coming. It's probably going to be extremely long because I ordered like 15 samples from them. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you guys next time. Bye.